side by side Sondheim, first with last year's Tony winning revival of Sweeney Todd. And now Todd director John Doyle has again put musical instruments in the hands of actors in his staging of Company. Raul Esparza may not play as much as the rest of the cast, but anyone who's seen the show knows he is making beautiful music nonetheless. He recently stopped by to talk about his role in the show with our Donna Carger. Raul Esparza, welcome to On Stage. Thank you for having me. Great to have you back in. Yeah. Um, let's start going back to your earlier connections with the show company before you became involved in this production. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'd read that you initially saw it as more of a sitcom -y type show with Bobby going through all the, you know, the wacky neighbors and his friends. And How did that change when you hooked up with John Doyle? Well, I had seen the show a number of times and my first exposure to it was a production that was you know, set in the 70s and very much um, little vignettes and sketches and I thought that's all I understood. But I also was in my early 20s when I first saw it so yeah. I didn't so you get it as it. much you know and I've changed as well. Then I saw it at the Kennedy Center with John Barrowman and Lynn Redgrave and I thought it was just spectacular. And I saw how much fun it was but I didn't get all the other things that Sondheim and, and, and George Firth were trying to do with the show or Hal Prince for that matter. Mm -hmm. And talking to John Doyle about it when we met to discuss whether or not I wanted to do this and if we'd like to work together, we both started talking about how we'd always felt that the show had more going on than we'd seen in other productions, neither of us ever having seen the original. Right. And then what could we do or what could we bring to it to try to make it more of a story where you really felt like being alive was just inevitable that that, that moment was the, the evening built to needing a song like that to happen right. because it's one of those things that sometimes Sondheim has been quoted as saying that, that he they never was sure that they had solved the ending of the show so we, we thought well being very arrogant John and I thought well what if we try to figure that out through uh -huh. the character of Bobby and through John Doyle's method of if you want to call it that of having the actors double as an orchestra your character has a, a unique way of dealing with your character your role of dealing with how you when you play yes um, I won't reveal what happens but uh, well, part of the part of the thing we we thought was interesting was that what if the sh the show is about a man who is entirely supported by his friends including uh, musically, musically. Uh -huh. and what if you extend that as far as it can possibly go someone who is incapable of living their own life without people giving them opinions about mm -hmm. what their life should be and part of what happens with John's method as you said you know this actor musician work is that Bobby's inside the orchestra now and so we just kept finding ways to have the music tell the story as much as the as the scenes did and why people would play a particular instrument at a particular moment and almost like a, like a non-stop party where your friends come over with instruments and they won't go home right. <laughs> you know right. Let's talk a bit again, I don't want to reveal it for people who aren't familiar with the show, but your climactic moment in being alive mm -hmm. and playing the piano. Yeah. Talk about what that's like for you, because you're not a, a professional Well, I'm not a pianist. Player, and I, but, and but it's more than just, okay, I had to learn it for this. It, it informs your role, right? It's, absolutely. And it's one of those things where, again, we thought if you push it to its conclusion, at some point, Bobby then maybe has to learn to play for himself. Mm -hmm. But that's nothing you can really plan. And although I practiced the piano like a lunatic, and mm -hmm. Mary Mitchell Campbell had set up orchestrations where the piano would become featured, um, and I learned through, and she sat me down with hand and exercises that all the pianists know, and I didn't, and I kept doing my scales. The actual experience of standing on a stage and playing a piano mm -hmm. is one of the most terrifying things mm -hmm. I have ever lived through, mm -hmm. and it helps. It actually helps. <laughs> Somebody know me too well Somebody pull me up short And put me through hell And give me sport For being alive What about taking on this role? It's, it's such a complex role and... Which I didn't realize. <laughs> this, this guy, yeah. So how did you approach it? And how did you, what did you learn I as you went through? I didn't work on it the way that I usually do. I usually really do a lot of planning ahead of time with roles and do a lot of research. So mm -hmm. That's one of the things I love about acting is disappearing into the world of the play. Mm -hmm. But in this case, there's nowhere to disappear into. Bobby is me. Bobby is you. Bobby is mm -hmm. the audience. Right. 
And that's what's so wonderful about the show is that we've all been in that position. And it's take we're going to set it now, so there was no historical research to do. And I actually uh, took a friend's advice and and went to rehearsals, having read the script only once, mm -hmm. and just went blank. Uh -huh. And trusted John. This is a friend who had worked on Sweeney Todd, and trusted John to just sort of lead us where it would go. Mm -hmm. And so the usual preparation wasn't there, but the the in depth work that I usually do by myself, John Doyle does in the room, uh -huh. and that's uh -huh. amazing. Yeah. And he just you get up on your feet and you try to sing 30, 40, 50 ways, uh -huh. and eventually you find the one way. But you're just using yourself. He hires people because he likes to spend time with those people. Right. And who you are is as much who the character is, mm -hmm. you know. Which I always try to do with my characters, but in this case, there's no hiding. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not Bobby, really. Mm -hmm. I'm not many of the things that Bobby but is. Obviously, you bring yourself obviously. to every role. You but you do, have to bring yourself to it. You and you, it, it, it's wonderful that it, it required so little preparation mm -hmm. in that sense. Mm -hmm. So we're almost out of time, but uh, you started the show in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. in a much more low-profile uh, venue, of course. And I know you, you talked about what a great family, you, know, you, you bonded there yeah. and everything. Then you come to Broadway. Now, you're no stranger to Broadway, but this is your, your biggest role on Broadway, yeah. I would have to say. I agree. And there's the spotlight that mm -hmm. you get on Broadway. And I know you, shortly before the show opened, an interview came out in the New York Times mm -hmm. that dealt with some very personal stuff mm -hmm. that... I think you you said it. You kind of went a little bit farther with that interview than you planned to do. Yes. But along with celebrity, does come this responsibility of dealing with the press more and more. Yeah. Has your outlook on how you handle interviews changed, and what did you learn from that I experience? I learned, I think, to um, to keep things a little closer to the vest in terms of the press. I used to feel like reporters were friends. They're not. I don't think that Joyce Wadler, who wrote the profile, in any way was um, being disingenuous or in, in it, you know I certainly don't mean to say that the profile was intended to damage what what you have to learn is that it's a very fine line as an actor to separate who you are from what you do mm -hmm. and that everything has to stay in your control and I'm only beginning to understand that I'm only beginning to understand too in this day and age the way that celebrity works because you don't generally get that kind of attention on Broadway mm -hmm that people are more interested in who you are and how you live your life than perhaps is comfortable. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason you become an actor is to disappear. I know that sounds strange, but it is what you do. And that is just a learning process. And I think I just have to uh, maybe plan ahead a little more, think a little more clearly ahead of time, and, and know too that not everybody needs to know absolutely everything about me, you know, because then if there's no mystery, what's the point of coming to see me on stage? Mm -hmm. And also, it's important to take care of the people in your life who might be affected mm -hmm. by the things that you end up saying, you know? Well, fortunately we're out of time, but quickly back to the role. You are doing a wonderful job as Thank Bobby. You. It's such a thrill to go see it. It's just an Thank amazing you. production. It's extraordinary to so. do. And I, I really, I pinch myself every night because I remember seeing myself, seeing myself, I remember being at the Ethel Barrymore watching shows uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I can see myself I remember the seat I was in really? and being up there uh -huh. doing this play um, it's extraordinary well as you mentioned the Ethel, Ethel Barrymore theater is where people can catch you in company thank you. so thanks so much thank you it is time for